Good. How, how, are, how are, you? are you, Rachel? I'm doing well. Uh, so, thank you for writing a badass movie. I absolutely love John Wick Four. Uh, went brought my friend. We were cackling and having the time of our lives during this movie, and it is genuinely funny in a way that I think really plays to the Keanu Reeves action star we know and love in a way that the other John Wick movies hasn't completely like uh, enveloped. Um, and so for you both, what was kind of the thought process behind making it funnier than we've seen John Wick be in the past? Yeah. To me, I think you just need those moments of, of levity, especially in such an epic, uh, long, epic movie that goes to so many different places and has such kind of intense emotional content. You need those moments of jokes that one, let the audience know that kind of we're having fun and we're kind of aware that this is a heightened tone, but also just kind of break it up and, and kind of, uh, you know, put you in a lighter space that you're ready to then dive back into the next intense yeah, action. And, and but, I, I, you know, yeah. The fact that it's a heightened tone is 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 what's key here. It it runs the risk in the hands of a lesser filmmaker than Chad. Uh, it, this could this could tilt into the ridiculous. Um, uh, by having the odd wink and the nod, uh, it sort of brings you back to reality and reminds you what this is. This is, you know, I mean, whenever we talk about this, this is largely a superhero movie, you know, uh, uh, you know but with a Wook's eye sort of like, um, influence uh, and and those need to be fun. Or just you, 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 there's a there's it is a it is a way to mitigate the the body count and turn it from violence to action. And you know everything is designed around that. The fact that it happens all at night. The fact that no civilians were harmed in the making of this film. The fact that everybody that that is fighting John Wick is realistically in a uniform and a bad person and is sort of signed up to be killed by John Wick. All makes it very acceptable, and the humor is just a part of that. It's also, I mean, also it's fun. I mean, you know, it's like the 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 the, the, the underlying conceit of this film could be very heavy and revenge driven. Revenge driven, but like everything else in the franchise, Chad Keanu managed to flip it on its head. So it's a revenge film, but it's about a fucking dog. I mean, really, like it's it's you know, like really, John, a fucking dog, right? Uh, and somehow that makes it okay. The minute that that dog had a gun to its head, I was like, oh no. John Wick's not gonna <laughs> let that fly. I was like, "This that guy's done. There's no way." We um, learned our lesson is, uh, from the franchise. We're not gonna hurt another dog. <laughs> you physically get. I mean, truly, the third movie still is one of my favorite dog moments, where that dog gets shot and then takes revenge for itself. I was like, "This dog gets it." That dog was like, "I'm gonna kill you. You, you shot me." Yeah. Not cool. <laughs> but it is truly like it. Only Keanu could play a role where he falls down like what 200 and some stairs you said it was to sacra Kerr, and like you're like yeah i believe that he got back up and kept walking up the rest of those stairs um because it's keanu reeves but you guys with this crypto such a wonderful job of like giving us those little moments that like fans of his from the 80s and 90s and on love with the yaz and the kind of like how he reacts to people were just so so good and how much was that you guys working with Keanu and like making that character still be John Wick, but still have those moments versus like you guys just knowing exactly how you wanted him to react in those scenes? Well, the franchise is Keanu. It's Keanu, oh, yeah, sorry, right? Oh, sorry. Uh, it's Keanu, and Ke Keanu is John Wick. So yeah. you, you, first of all, you defer to him. He, he has the timing down perfectly. Uh, that said, he understands that it's a very, it's, he has, I want to say, he has the courage to be silent. He is, he, 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 he likes other people. He lets other people do the talking. And he lets other people react to him. And there's something incredibly potent about that. So, you know, you, you, you give him leeway. Yes, we work with him a lot, but he was more interested candidly in the other characters' lines than in his own, because he wanted to, a lot of ways to say as little as possible. It's, it's emblematic the first movie, whenever Vigo is on the phone saying, you know, John, you know, it's unfortunate we're here, the circumstances. And finally, you know, let us not, you know, fall prey to our lesser selves. And then it's like, click. And it's like, what do you say? Enough. Like that, that's John Wick. So it's, 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 it's what he doesn't say that's really potent. Absolutely. That's why John Wick is so cool is because he's not, he doesn't think he's cool. He's not going to tell you he's cool. It's everybody else is afraid of him and knows that he's cool and is saying it to him. So it is kind of like exactly what, what Mike said, which is the less he says, the cooler he is. So it kind of services that. But again, like the whole franchise is Keanu. So really it, it's just a, a gift to us as writers where we're just servicing this guy who's been doing incredible work for, for decades. And yeah. Yeah. And I think it is truly one of those mo franchises where like the minute someone does anything, I'm like, ah. How stupid can you be? Why would you try and go up against him? That is the dumbest thing anyone's chosen <laughs> to try and do. Um, but this movie, it's so good in how it introduces new characters and you already kind of know their whole deal. Uh, like Donnie Yen's relationship with everyone else. I was like, yeah, well, it's Donnie Yen. So already I'm like, again, don't mess with him. Just let him do what he's gonna do. 
but also you guys did a really good job of making these characters so completely under like we knew know what they're doing right off the gate um and so how was it kind of working with such legends especially in this movie like Donnie Yen on top of Keanu and Ian McShane to make those stories and those relationships so perfect with one another you know, I think that's something that this franchise has been doing incredibly well since the first installment is kind of the unspoken backstory of these characters. Like in the first movie, you don't really know what John's relationship with Ian McShane is or Willem Dafoe, but you just pick it up from this sense of shared history. Mm -hmm. So at least, you know, I think that's what we were really trying to do in this movie too, was introduce these characters where we're not going to explicitly say what the backstory is, but just from the chemistry between these great actors, you get a sense that there is a shared history of great respect between them. And I think it's cooler if you don't know exactly what it is, because it lets you as an audience member kind of go to all these wild places in your mind. But but it's just kind of the the sense from the actor is the chemistry that makes you feel like there's kind of and, like- And also, it's, it's also the, yeah. um, like we, we have the benefit of standing on the shoulders of three movies that very specifically, and this is from Chad and Keanu, did not take their audiences for granted. These are not exercises mm -hmm. in exposition. These are, we're going to drop you in to a moment in time and you're going to have to catch up. We're going to treat you like an adult. And this is what is so notable about this franchise vis-a-vis -vis some of the, some other action franchises. This one acts, treats the audience as though they are adults. It's a genre piece that is slightly elevated because it doesn't stop to say, okay, this is the world of Wick. This is where the boundaries are. This is how you enter. This is where you came from. Uh, the, 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 the conceit is that the questions are far more an, uh, interesting than the answers. Once I show you how the magic trick is done, it's not a magic trick anymore. I, if, you, if you have to think about it, our job is to make you walk out of the theater living the world of John Wick. It's just a taste. This is this is just, we, the, we just pull the curtain back just a little enough to like peer inside and let you know there's something going on back there. But once you show you the wizard, the, the, the franchise is done. So it's it, this is really an exercise, a redactive exercise. It's, it's more an exercise in what you don't show than what you show. And Lauston embraces this more than anyone else in his cinematography, which is more about shadows and light than it is about content. It's what you don't see that's more interesting than what you see. And it's the same thing when it comes to telling this, telling uh, functioning within the John Wick universe. Yeah, and I think, um, I mean, look, I'm a millennial woman, so I've loved Keanu Reeves my entire life. Uh, it's just part, it's part for the course. Um, but I think what you guys did in the beginning of the, this movie in particular with Lawrence Fishburne saying that speech and then like the way that it is formatted and the, the, I think he, the line he says is, uh, he says like, and here's the king or something like that. And then it's yeah, just the punching. Yeah, exactly. yeah, yeah. And it's just so good. And also like, like you said, it's a nod to the fans because of course, I want to hear more uh, Morpheus say, "Here's the king to Neo," and but it's John Wick, and like it's just like that is like the warping of my brain, where I'm like, "Oh my, it, oh, this is crazy," but also so amazing. When you're doing moments like that, which could be so cheesy, how do you know as writers, like, yeah, we know it's going to get sold. We know that these people are going to be like fully on board the minute it happens. Uh, for that, for that particular instance, I'll tell you one word: Fishburne. <laughs> like that guy could be the phone book and it would sound good. I mean, we, we, it, 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 th those lines could land like wet turds. Okay. They're, they're, but these actors are so good. You have Clancy Brown, you have Hero, I, I, Donnie, I, 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 you know, you, Fishburne, uh, McShane. These, these are, these are, these are really powerful actors. Like, like, mm -hmm. and, and they, they, they can pretty much sound like I was on the set and, and McShane asked me, you mind if I change a line, the word, the order of words? I'm all, Mr. McShane, you can do anything you want. You are Winston. Like, like, you know, it's like, thanks for asking. But the, the, we have the benefit of, of leaning on some really, really powerful, talented craftsmen, I guess. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I can't wait. I'm, I'm doing the carpet for the premiere on Wednesday. And I literally, they were like, do you want to see it again? I was like, yes, I want to watch Ian McShane walk across the screen for two full minutes again i need to see My it, favorite it shot is, in the movie <laughs> it is truly watching that in an audience is unmatched because everyone slowly starts laughing at different points because they're like what he's still walking he's still walking across the screen that's um, the confidence of chad to know he can pull that off <laughs> and get away with that it. and like bill skarsgård is so scary I, I this movie in general is just so so good um thank you guys so much uh i'm a big Keanu and John Wick fan, so this was incredible. Uh, and I can't wait for everyone to get to see it. Oh, thank you so much. It's so kind. <laughs> thank you.